And joining me in studio now to discuss the celebrated completion of the first batch of ele electronic lock locomotives produced at Transnet's manufacturing and engineering facility in Goodersport is the chief executive of Transnet Freight Rail, that is Siabonga Gama. Thank you so much, uh, Siabonga, for your time this evening. Some high praise uh, from the minister. So it looks like the restructuring, the refocusing of the, 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 the business and ensuring that the balance sheet is sorted um, was done. Yeah, I think uh, we've made uh, tremendous progress uh, over the last few years uh, in terms of uh, turning transit around. Um, I think um, we are beginning to show our balance sheet is strong. Uh, the customer satisfaction index has risen. Mm -hmm. uh, we are beginning to also make a telling impact uh, in terms of moving traffic uh, from road to rail. So let's talk about these locomotives then. I mean, this is obviously part of your broader capital expenditure program at Transnet. But for freight rail, what does this addition mean for your own capacity? In terms of uh, our capacity, uh, these trains will be deployed uh, on the Manganese line from Postmasbeck to Port Elizabeth. Some of them will also be uh, put on the uh, Postmasbeck to Thunderbale Park and Newcastle line to haul uh, iron ore. Um, what it means uh, is that uh, we are now able um, to improve the logistics competitiveness of Transnet Freight Rail. Uh, we are now able to haul much more. Uh, we are adding uh, with these locomotives uh, an additional four to six million tons mm. per annum. Is there such demand? I mean, we've been talking ad nauseum about the drop in commodity prices. Yeah, the drop in commodity prices um, um, <clears throat> is, is a cause for concern. However, uh, the issues uh, that we've been grappling with for a number of years uh, is that uh, there's actually much more demand for rail capacity. We still have um, uh, uh, quite a number of uh, uh, tonnages which are on road, which uh, in fact should be on rail. Mm. So we'll still be able uh, uh, to make an impact in terms of uh, moving the traffic uh, from road to rail. This is just the first batch, right? The 95, how many more trains are coming through? We're just warming up. Um, <laughs> we're just warming up. Yeah. Um, and this is only the first 95. We have uh, another 100 which we want to deploy on the coal line. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, some of those, uh, um, uh, we've started to uh, assemble those in Kudusport. Uh, there's another 60 uh, diesels that GE is assembling. Uh, but uh, later in the year, we're going to start the assembly of uh, 1,064 General Freight uh, uh, ACDC uh, dual locomotives. What does uh, that mean? <laughs> uh, what it means is that uh, they will be, will be able to use them uh, on, on both uh, 3 kV traction as well as 25 uh, kV traction, both uh, uh, alternating current as well as uh, direct current. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh, in practical terms, um, we've been, um, <clears throat> if you look at uh, where we've come from uh, with the four provinces, yeah. we've had to change trains uh, into diesel depending on which province you enter. Now with these trains, we're just going to be able to sail through, which means the uh, cycle times are going to reduce, mm. which then gives us uh, much more capacity to haul more cargo going and forward. And in fact, I was going to ask you what the, the cost savings that come with um, the, the, these electronic locom locomotives mm. versus using the, the, the diesel ones that you've had. Uh, these locomotives are phenomenal. Um, part of the savings that we're going to see is uh, energy savings uh, up to 25% less energy consumption but they also regenerate uh, electricity. So you are able uh, on the downstream to regenerate electricity so the uh, upcoming trains oh. on, on the same grid can use that same electricity. Um, <clears throat> but there's also a number of other uh, things that um, uh, we think are quite important for us um, uh, going forward because uh, the maintenance uh, is uh, much longer, the ma maintenance cycles are much longer. It's between 90 to 120 days, yeah. as opposed to about 30 to 40 days in terms of the current fleet. So uh, there's quite a lot of um, uh, very good things that are coming up as a result of this acquisition. And very quickly, a big part of this was the technology and the skills transfer yeah. as well, because yes. you want if, uh, ultimately for Transnet to become an original equipment manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Just tell us a little bit about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, what we've been able uh, to work through on this particular acquisition is to get uh, Chinese technology uh, to come through into South Africa, where we are now able uh, to create as part of a, a larger industrial complex,
the capabilities for South Africa to manufacture electric locomotives. But also what it means is that uh, with these capabilities, we'll be able to export to the rest of the African continent. So uh, this has been very good because uh, we've been able to send about 190 of our technicians and engineers mm. to China to learn firsthand yeah. uh, how to deal with some of the electronics uh, that you require in terms of the brain of a locomotive. Uh, so it's, it's been much more than just what we used to do in the past, which was welding. Yeah. Uh, but now we are actually, um, we've got uh, significant IP, okay. uh, uh, which is um, uh, quite good for us going forward as a country. We'll leave it there. Mm. Thanks for your time Thank today. You that is uh, Sia Wangagama, who is CEO of Transnet Freight Rail.